Studio Underdog have been giving us fun and zany watches for a minute now, but always the same general watch design, the 38.5mm chronograph. Until today, Studio Underdog have just released something new and it is oh so good. So this is the O2 series and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in the fastest way possible. Let's throw up a timer and see how this goes. So this new Zero Two series is so different from anything Studio Underdog has delivered to us before. Closed case back, field watch instead of chronograph, and 100 meters of water resistance. So why? What's the inspiration behind this? The new O2 series is inspired by the Dirty Dozen watches and serves as an interesting thought experiment. What if it was 1945 and the British Ministry of Defense had just tasked Studio Underdog to make an accurate and reliable timepiece to be used by the armed forces in World War II? And voila, this is it. A vintage looking field watch with modern specifications and that staple fun studio underdog perspective. Looking at the specifications, all four of these new models have a case size of 37 millimeters, a lug to lug of 36, and a thickness of 12 millimeters or 9.8 millimeters excluding the domed sapphire. These have a two-part case construction, screw down case back, studio underdog signed crown, all in stainless steel. One big thing to note for our cosplay divers who might be watching, these also have 100 meters of water resistance. So if you want to swap out the leather straps for a rubber or NATO strap, you can also take these swimming. Get in! The movement is the Salida Manual Winding SW210-1, which has 42 hours of power reserve. Honestly, I'm a sucker for a manual winding watch. I just think it's so romantic and oldie worldy, and far less sporty than an automatic. Quite impressive specifications, really, and the brand is offering a go-anywhere, do-anything watch with a bit of personality to it. I love it. This is always the portion that I care about the most. How does it wear? How does it look? You can have the best specifications in the world, but if it doesn't look right, you're not going to wear it. You're not going to buy it. So with a diameter of 37 millimeters and a 46 millimeter lug to lug, this really covers a lot of wrist sizes. I'd describe it as vintage wearing proportions, but with modern build quality and specs. So here it is on my five and a half inch wrist or 14 centimeter circumference wrist versus my husband's seven inch wrist or 17.8 centimeter wrist. Honestly, I think it looks really good on both of us, but as always, it looks the slightest bit better on him and his, his larger wrist. It's just so vintage looking. I feel like you could dress this up, wear it to work under your cuff, or dress it down with jeans and a t-shirt. How are we doing on the timer? I'm so stressed about this. This was an extra layer we didn't need to add in. Ugh. Let's talk about what I think might be my favorite distinctive of the Zero Two series, the dial and color variations. Studio Underdog are masters of colors and these are no different. First up, we got the pink lemonade with the pink to yellow gradient dial. To me, this one is the most Studio Underdog. Next, we have the Stephanie Blue, not to be confused with her younger, far less refined sister, Tiffany Blue. This is a far more natural and subtle blue with the pumpkin hands. Then we have the full moon, which at first glance is the most classic looking, but there's a bit more to it. And last, this one's my personal favorite, the midnight, all black base style with loomed hour markers and numerals. Now, what you need to know about these before we go any further, these are absolute loom daddies. That is the technical horological term. Look at these. They're so awesome. So the pink lemonade has a green fully loomed dial. Stephanie blue has a blue fully loomed dial and a yellow orange loom on the hands. And the full moon has a blue fully loomed dial. Midnight, or the black variation, is just loomed hands and numerals, which would usually be exciting, but not as exciting next to these crazy dials. My personal favorite loom daddy is the Stephanie Blue with the loom differentiation. It's so cool. Okay, this next section sounds same, same, but it is kind of different, I promise. The dial on these, it's just incredible. 
So not only are these fully loomed, but they have a crazy sandwich style. So the base dial is seven layers of custom-made Super Luminova pigment. This whole process is super labor-intensive, time-consuming, as each layer must dry before the next one is applied. Then on top of the base dial is a one millimeter sapphire disc. And it's on that sapphire disc that the branding, minute track, and Arabic numerals are printed. Once these two dials are affixed to one another via the two pins, so those two exposed screws on either side of the dial, do serve a practical function in keeping the sandwich dial together. This creates depth and make the numbers and branding seem like they're floating. So we emailed Richard, the founder of Studio Underdog, asking about the design inspiration of the inclusion of the exposed pins and why he decided to keep them in. His background is in industrial design and a key philosophy for him is that form follows function. He had an opportunity to try and hide these pins, but instead decided to make them a feature of the dial. Looking at the case, there's a nice combination of brushed and polished surfaces, and turning this watch around, we have a closed case back featuring a jellyfish, which is kind of wonderful. I did ask Richard why the jellyfish, and his reply has a lot of big words for me, but I'm gonna try my best to say this. The jellyfish is a semantic reference to the dial concept. Bioluminescence is represented by the luminous base dial and the translucency by the clear sapphire disc. And this is my favorite part of the email. Plus, it looks dope. And I can't disagree, jellyfish just are badass. I, controversially, almost always prefer a closed case back. A beautiful closed case back, like this one, decorated. I'll take this nine times out of ten. Even with an insanely decorated movement, I usually prefer an officer's case back. I don't know why I'm like this. Your case back preferences are personal and unique to you, and there's no right or wrong answers. If you've been a longtime viewer and subscriber of my channel, then you know I've got a thing for bracelets and straps. And this might be one of my favorite things about these new models. The strap pairings are absolutely gorgeous. Firstly, the color matching is masterful. And I think this might be the whole reason why the Midnight is my favorite. The black dial and the dark green strap. Oh, like, come on. It's so good. And secondly, the strap quality is beautiful. Soft, high quality, non-padded leather, giving some serious vintage vibes. The band is 18 millimeters and tapers down to 16 mil. They're masterful. Now I need to note, I probably should have said this earlier, but I'm saying it now, the straps were made by the strap tailor. So British fusion happening there. Actually, I didn't say earlier, I probably should have said this too, Studio Underdog is a British company assembled in Britain. And the strap tailor is a strap shop here in the UK and he makes bespoke straps as well. 10 out of 10 on these straps, beautiful, masterful. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. Okay, how do you buy these? And that's a good question. Embargo is lifted right now, today, October 17th, and these will be made available for pre-order on November the 1st, 2023, for nine hours at studiounderdog.com. Nine hours, that's it. These are super limited. November 1st, 2023, from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. GMT. And if you're in the first 500 people, the watches will be delivered before Christmas. So Santa and his elves will be sat there with his finger on the mouse ready to go. Cut that out. We're on a race against the time. Cut that. Okay, fun fact about me. I will forever have a soft spot for Studio Underdog. When I was first starting out on YouTube, they were the first brand that ever wanted to work with me and sent me watches to review. And they were already a brand that I loved so much. They were brand new and they were just so fun, irreverent and just doing something different. I don't know, they were just making watches fun again. I think these are an absolute slam dunk for them, and it feels like they are moving from strength to strength. Great specifications, great wear, great brand. There's nothing to complain about here. How am I doing on time? <laughs> horribly! Freaking horribly! Okay, outro. 
If you're interested in one of these, November 1st, bebe, be ready. I'll put the release times in my description with different time zones as well. I'd love to know what you guys think to these in the comments down below. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you, do you like the direction Studio Underdog's going in? Let me know. And let's now thank the amazing, fabulous Popeteer patrons who keep the lights on here at Gringa HQ. What should we do? Interpretive dance. Your patrons, you're the best people in the world.